आ रहे मनीष हाँ आ रहे ओके सो एक बार ये चीज देख व्हेन आई एम लुकिंग एट द स्क्रीन राइट नाउ वेर इज माय आई पोजीशन इज इट इज इट लुकिंग एट यू So in today's session we are going to talk about exam preparation strategy. So इसमें मेरा आँख कहाँ पे है? थोड़ा नीचे दिख रहा है कैमरे को नहीं देख रहा ना तुम? Okay. How can I move this? ऊपर जो है वेबकैम उसको देख सकता है लेकिन मतलब it is fine थोड़ा देर ऊपर देखो थोड़ा देर पीपीटी देखो वैसा कर सकते हैं. नीचे हो जाता है नहीं हो पाएगा वैसे ये बहुत ज़्यादा नीचे हो गया ना हाँ हाय सर कैन यू हेयर मी या गुड कैन यू सी मी प्रॉपर्ली प्रॉपर्लेस यस सर So, so yes sir so uh, people are joining on facebook live is it yeah okay so, so this orientation is fine from my end yeah 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 so uh, sir i have shared the screen can you see it yes okay so sir um, you, you will uh, start the session mm -hmm. in facebook how do we have a look at what is going on um sir facebook uh, you will have to log into mane you will have to have another uh, screen open of, of your of ndli's facebook page okay mm -hmm. okay Sir, uh, you will introduce uh, yourself and and myself, right, during this uh, introduction part. And no, I think uh, yeah, that is a good way. I can introduce you, and uh, um, and then uh, I will introduce myself. And uh, or uh, how is that the best way to do it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, sir, uh, you will start from here. Oh. Yeah. No, before that. Where do I start from? Sir, you will kick off oh. this, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, I will in, first. I will introduce you and me. Yeah. And then uh, I will go ahead and uh, start. Welcome them, and I'll I'll tell you. You you change the slides as soon as I'm speaking. Yeah. 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 Hi PPD. So sir, that is the focus of the session. This is the guidelines. Somebody is asking for session link. I think they have sent. The, this is the session link, right? So yeah. this is the link. In Facebook page, somebody a one hour ago asked for session link. I replied to one person that. Uh, Good. So then you will focus on this part. I mean uh, the whole uh, current scenario. Yeah. And uh, the you know context. So, so go to go to the first slide. So go to the first slide. Yeah. Then. 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 i think uh, and then right then and then i hand it over to you fine 
sir i had one question uh, so we have the q and a sessions right mm. so for example after this we will have the q and a session mm. so how do we do this part properly that is my uh, whole point when no, i you, you 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 say that i have received such a question such a question and because uh, who else will get to see the questions uh, sir i uh, i have got our team members to collate questions from uh, students on the right. and you have sent it to us so you speak about those questions acha acha mane actually sir what has happened is when i saw the questions from the students uh, in the in their registration form we yeah. have actually covered the majority of them yeah so anticipation was okay na hmm. correct and anticipation was okay So, so yes, in the in the questions you will say that we have received this question. So you choose which question you will answer. I have I have taken one one question, sir, for each Q and A part. That's it. Part first. That's all. That's all. Manish is all set. Good. Yeah, we are set. We'll go live at three exactly. Good. Manish, are you seeing the Facebook page activity? Anything there? अभी कुछ नहीं है ना नॉट नॉट राइट नो हाउ विल पीपल विल नॉट वी हैव नॉट स्टार्टेड सो हाउ दे विल सी ओनली आफ्टर 3 ओक्लॉक द सेशंस या सो बट बाय दैट टाइम यू विल स्टार्ट ना या सो हाउ विल पीपल नो दैट टू गेट रेडी सर वी हैव सेंट अ मेल आल्सो टू ऑल द रजिस्ट्रेंट्स Right. With the links of the NDLI Facebook page and the event page, to log in at 3 p.m. Correct. So I so, think it will yeah. take five minutes for the audience to build up. First two three minutes for the audience to build up. I think right. that. That's not an issue. PPT I have included your solution as well. Okay. Okay, thank you. Sir, uh, in the end, after Q and A session three, mm. after uh, this session. Mm. uh if you will again take over from here uh, and say what about ndli right. so in q and a session 3 sir i have a question where i have taken like uh, there was a question asked by students say how do i manage school and competitive exams together mm. so i will focus on that and then there were some questions show me the rest of the slides after this uh -huh. right then 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 right okay so this is the part where uh, we yeah yeah, yeah. the entire thing so correct correct so then for you 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 will tell me uh, please uh, i will now request or something yeah 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 that i will do that so i'm just saying this is the order of the animation that's so all right. you will go with the first solution second solution mm -hmm. third solution like that mm -hmm. and the yeah. final solution is the janet mm -hmm. so so that is right okay. and uh, then we say that guess who was the student um correct, correct and then you will complete with the uh, next this, step yeah yeah this you can also say acha acha theek acha theek acha and then we will close with this okay okay anish two more minutes yeah two more minutes
Manish? One moment. Yes. Uh, are we live? 20 seconds. Okay, okay. You have the link connected, right? Yeah. We are also on Facebook, uh, on YouTube, no? No, sir, only Facebook. Um. So you have to tell me when to start. Yes, sir. Please start. So, on behalf of the National Digital Library of India, IIT Kharagpur, and Ministry of Human Resource Development, which has now become Ministry of Education, Government of India, we welcome you to this exam preparation strategy both especially for JE Main and also for NEET today. Thank you all for joining. And all of you are aware that the government has now announced that both the JE Main and all these entrance exams will go on. It has also started issuing very specific guidelines. And I guess all of you have started having jitters and stomachs and butterflies on your stomach. Uh, today is the first day where based on the uh, inputs that we have received from many of you who wish to join. We wish to give you a heads up on how we will try to go ahead. I am Professor Parthu Chakraborty. I am a professor of computer science and engineering at IIT Kharagpur. I am also a joint faculty in the Center for Artificial Intelligence. I have been the former director of IIT Kharagpur and I am along with others a key member of the National Digital Library of India project. And I am also the principal investigator of this project, which we have built up. On behalf of the National Digital Library, I welcome you all. Along with me, we have several people today, of which the main speaker of this talk today is Mr. Rajiv Agarwal. Rajiv is an alumnus of IIT Kharagpur. He has been my student. And with Rajiv, I have worked very closely when he was a student. Subsequently, through his entrepreneurial spirit and his mechanism and his contribution to education and student performance, he is now uh, the CTO of the National Digital Library Club and also runs his own activities. I welcome Rajiv Agarwal to this show and for interacting and presenting to you his experiences on behalf of National Digital Library of India. We are extremely glad that you have joined us. The focus of this session today is to bridge the gap between potential and performance. Because the exams are near, many of you have already made your preparation and are gearing up for the performance. Many of you have extremely good potential, but somehow get nervous, get excited, and often make some very, very simple errors, which you should avoid. Today, Rajiv will take you through some of these aspects, which are very important for preparing for the exam. Preparation for the exam 
does not mean that you are good, bad, or anything else. Or it also does not mean that this is the only way to study for the subject. It is the practice to make yourself perfect and ready before the exam. With this, we move on to the next slide. The guidelines for this session are, please keep a notebook and pen for you to take notes. Please ask questions in the form that has been provided to you in the comment section of the Facebook page live. We will answer your questions both during and end of the session. Towards the end of the session, a link will be provided so that you can give feedback and receive the e-certificate and a copy of this presentation. With this, I want to inform you that COVID has opened our eyes and the world not only needs doctors, engineers and scientists as before, but now they need them with what is called COVID speed. COVID speed requires us to come with new solutions and challenges at a rapid pace where doctors, engineers, scientists and everybody else, people at large, would like to work together. Now, you're at the threshold of your class 12, especially students. And in order to become a doctor, engineer or a scientist in this country, you really have to go through these gateways. And the gateways are several of which to get into India's top science, engineering and medical colleges, one of the key gateways are JE and NEET. So today we will be concentrating in the next one, one and a half hours on how you will prepare for JE and NEET. I now hand it over to Rajiv Agarwal who is an expert in this, who has been training students for a long time and is our key member of our National Digital Library of India, who has curated this presentation for you and will go through this presentation so that you can get maximum benefit out of it. I request you to keep your maximum concentration on this. Over to Rajiv. Thank you, sir. A very good afternoon to all the students and uh, participants who have joined us on this uh, webinar. Uh, we received a lot of questions uh, from you all who have who registered for this, and uh, and and I believe uh, we we felt we would divide the whole session into three parts. The first part uh, is is going to focus on what are the best practices of studying and learning, so that you know you can get more out of how you study and how you learn. The second part of the session today, we will focus on, on tips and techniques uh, on how to improve your score in the exam. So we will, we will typically focus on what are the shortcut techniques to save time and also focus on uh, how you can avoid making some very common mistakes uh, that students make. And the last part of our session will focus on short term and long term strategy and planning because a lot of you students are currently going to appear for the JE and NEET in September. So you need to know exactly which topics to study and uh, you know what will fetch you more marks. And for those students who are now in 11 and in 12, you have some more time. So how to prepare a long-term strategy. So, so the whole presentation today is going to focus on providing you clarity because we believe that clarity precedes mastery. And the whole session is, de is designed around the questions that you, you students have asked and what we normally encounter students asking us. Okay, so let's move on. So the first question that students ask us is when should I study? And a lot of, uh, a lot of students have sent in the questions also that should I become a night owl? Should I study at night? Uh, should I study at daytime? And, and what we felt is that, you know, uh, our body is like a clock. And uh, it's called the circadian rhythm. And there are specific times of the day when we are most productive, when, when our concentration levels are the highest. And we feel that it's very important for you to have adequate amount of rest at night. So the general, you know, sometimes students say that I, I, I study at night, I, I study till 4 a.m. in the morning. What happens? happens normally is that your concentration levels are not very high, your productivity is not very high. So what, what I would suggest is, is that it's important to get good 
amount of sleep, you know, six to seven hours of sound sleep at night and have focus on high productivity throughout the day. This is all the more important at least one month before your exam because your biological clock needs to be in tune with the timings of the exam, which don't happen at night, but they happen during the daytime. All right. Let's come to the next question. How long should I study? So, so this, this, this focuses on, you know, should I study for uh, two hours, three hours, four hours at a stretch? So this is a very common question where, where students say that, uh, you know, what, what is the adequate amount of time? And, and we feel that, you know, our, just like, again, our brain uh, is like a charger. You know, it, it, it gets saturated after some time. And uh, so the um, adequate amount of time for which you should study in one go is, uh, is one hour to 90 minutes. Because after that, whatever new information you're trying to take, that doesn't really come into your head properly. You're not able to absorb it properly. And what we also suggest is that you take short breaks after every, let's say, slot of one, one and a half hours that you have studied, you take a short break of, let's say, 15 to 20 minutes. Um, a lot of times, you know, what happens is students take a break of two hours after they have studied for one hour. So I, I would ideally, you know, that's, that's just something that we all often do but take a short break and then again re resume, resume your studies after that. The next question is, is where should I study? So you have your whole home and you have different rooms, uh, you know, different places where you can study. And very often what we find is that students are studying on their beds and uh, after some time the posture changes from, you know, from sitting to lying on the bed. And then after some time what is found is that students have fallen asleep. So, so the best place to study in, in, a, in a home is, is on a table and a chair. And you must have the adequate amount of lighting also. I mean, it could be either a study lamp or, you know, you must ensure that, that these things, the environmental factors are, are right. And also, if possible, you should study in a room where, where there is not too much of noise. I will come to this part in the next question. So, so we have covered three aspects right now. When should I study? How long should I study? And where should I study? All right. I would also encourage uh, all the participants in today's webinar that while I'm talking about these strategies and best practices, you keep posting your questions on the comment section of the Facebook live page. And what, what will happen is that a lot of our team members will start collating that also. And we can, we can see that if you have any special question that we have not covered, we will try to cover that as well. All right. Uh, one of the most frequently asked questions, in fact, a lot of you students uh, and, and teachers and principals who have registered for this event have asked this question, how can I increase my concentration? And, and you know, I, I, I want to share this is that, you know, we can do a lot of things in one day but we should focus on doing one thing at one time. And, and, and by that, currently one of our biggest distractions is the mobile phone. Uh, we have several apps, we have several social media apps on our mobile phone. So what, what my request and is that when you are studying, let's say that one hour slot that we just now talked about, uh, keep your mobile phone away. Because every time there is, a, there is a vibration or there is a ting sound on the mobile, our, our concentration that we should focus on, on, on the thing at hand, it deviates from there. So, so that is one of the most basic things you could do. You can always, you know, have your phone or other things after that when you're taking the break. The second important thing which is really useful in, in increasing your concentration is you should make notes. So a lot of times what happens is that we are doing a lot of theory. We are reading the theory of chapters in let's say physics or biology or chemistry and we, we keep reading stuff and we are not writing it down. So I'll give you a very good technique here. Uh, whenever you are studying, let's say, let's say you have studied a chapter, the theory for two hours. You keep out half an hour to make notes. Now note making is also an art. When you make notes, you simply don't copy stuff from whatever is written in the book and you, and you write it in your, in your notes. That is, the, that is not the best way. 
the, the a better technique is where you write down whatever you remember. That, that means you close the book and you try to write down some of those points, whatever you can remember. Now, there'll be two things that will happen here. You would have missed out on a lot of things that you have remember, that you have studied and you are aware of some of those points and you're not aware of some of those points. So now what you do is you open the book again and see which points you have missed out on, write them down. And of course, you will, you will see that there are some points you don't even remember that you don't remember. So that you again, write it down. This will increase your not, you know, this will not only increase your concentration because you're writing and reading at the same time, but it will increase the overall output of your, of your study sessions in a big way. So, so this is, this is something that I would like to suggest to all of you. Uh, another technique to increase your concentration, like I do this a lot is that I, I listen to music. Now for me, instrumental music works. Uh, vocal music doesn't work. Some of you can try that also. A lot of students have said that when they're solving problems in mathematics or uh, in physics or chemistry, uh, you know, it, the, the whole idea of listening to music while they're, while they're solving problems, it, it increases their concentration, cuts out the noise from outside. So, so you can try that out as well. Uh, if I were to ask you all this question uh, and you can comment uh, on this on the, on the Facebook live page right now, which is that subject that you are most scared of? If, if I can just have some of you mention your, uh, that subject that gives you nightmares that, that, that you know, you're most afraid of. And, and we got a lot of questions where students said that, you know, I like subject A and B, but I don't like subject C. Okay, so I'm sure, I'm sure every one of us has this one subject, which is our Achilles heel, which is our weak point. And how do we ensure that we can improve on this subject? That is, that is the most important focus because in an entrance exam, uh, let's say if you talk about JEE, then you have physics, chemistry, and mathematics. And if you have NEET, you have physics, chemistry, and biology. Your, your best chances are to get a good rank is your good, your rank is dependent on the total score. And there is a cutoff for each subject as well. So you should ideally be able to, you know, not to get away with these weaknesses, which, which can really dampen your overall rank. So, so I would, I would like to quote this uh, person called Mark Twain. What he had said was, if you ate a frog every morning, first thing in the, in the, you know, in, during the day, then nothing worse can happen to you throughout the day. So what I'm suggesting is that you don't eat a frog, but what, what we mean by the frog here is, is that it's that thing on our plate, which we don't like. So the best way to improve your, your subject phobia is by focusing on that subject. You know, you're, you have a weakness, let's say in a given subject, because you don't like to spend time with that subject. That is the only reason. So, if, I, if somebody says that I'm good in physics and maths, but I'm not good in chemistry, which a lot of students wrote in the, in the feedback, in the, in, the questions, in the questions they sent, uh, what I would say is, uh, and if I were to ask you that, you know, if you were to start a day, which subjects will you start studying with? So most of these students will say, we will start with physics and maths, and at the end of the day, we will study chemistry. And, and most likely what will happen is, is that the students, will spend all the time in studying physics and maths and will not even touch chemistry. And so chemistry will remain neglected and over a period of, a period of time, it will become that frog on your plate. So, so focus on giving time to your weaker subject or chapter first, improve them, get them to a certain standard because your stronger subjects, you will in an, inadvertently, you will spend time with them. Okay. So, so this is that uh, a very commonly asked question. How do I improve? one subject and this is the this is the most frequently asked question and we received a lot of questions from you all on this how can i manage my time better how can i uh, you know so what what happens what used to happen with me sometimes still happens is that we all make plans and we, when we are making plans we are so excited right i mean that okay i'm making a plan and i'm going to stick to this plan and what happens most often is that this plan after a few days lands up in the dustbin. 
because we we are not able to create uh, practical plans. So so what what we will try to do is we will try to break this whole planning into three parts. The first part is when we are making plans, we sometimes make plans, you know, in depth, detailed plans for for a month or for a week. But that's that's that doesn't really work out because we are not in control of what's going to happen one week from now. So the first piece of advice is make one plans one day at a time. Just just like if you have to if after the session today you make your plan for tomorrow only what you are going to do tomorrow. The second thing is uh, make a balanced routine. Now it's it's something very easy to say, but let's try to break this down. How do you make a balanced routine? So so Professor uh, Parth Chakravarti, when I was in IIT, he he had once mentioned this that we humans have a have a tendency to always overestimate and underperform. So when we when we say this, what we mean is that when you're making a routine or you're making a plan, you think I will study for 12 hours today. So that is your estimation of how much you will study. But what happens is you end up studying only for let's say nine hours. So, and over a period of time when this planning goes, then you know, you're not able to meet your targets for that given day. So what we are suggesting is that you always underestimate and overperform. That means if you think you will study for 12 hours, you plan for nine hours and then try to reach the targets for that nine hours. Most often you will see that you will exceed, you will still not be able to complete all the tasks that you had planned for nine hours. Over a period of time, you will become better. Also one very important thing is, is that when you're making a routine, don't just include that I will study, 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 study. Try to include some things that you also enjoy beyond studies. So, so you know, have some slot which, which is like, I will, I will also go out, like it's not possible right now, but let's say some sort of a recreational activity that you do and, and include that also. That can also act as a sort of a reward that if you complete this in a given time, that becomes your reward. So that's about the second point. Uh, you know, I have this, I have this joke where um, there was this man uh, who was drowning in a river. So this man then started shouting, God, God, please save me. So God came and asked in JPEG or in PDF. So, so what, what I'm trying to say here is, is that when you make up, you have to be very precise in what you are asking or what you want to achieve. So when you are making a plan for a given day, don't say that I will study physics and I will study chemistry for two hours and I will study maths for three hours. Don't do that. That is too general. When I say you have to be precise, what I mean is, is that you have to exactly pinpoint that in physics, I will study chapter A. In chapter A, I'm going to do theory. In chemistry, I'm going to do chapter C. In that, I'm going to solve 20 problems. In maths, I'm going to do so and so like this. So only when you are very, very precise in what you want from a given day in terms of the outcome, will you be able to get that outcome. Okay. So, so these are some of the golden rules of, uh, you know, planning that, that, you know, I have figured out through various interactions and having myself failed many times in trying to plan and then, you know, come and we are all improving at the end of the day. So, so those are some of the things. So in that section where, where we, where I wanted to focus on giving you some of these nuggets of, uh, you know, students, how can you get the most out of your study? study plans and study habits, best study habits or best performance. Sir, uh, do you, would you want to have any question here? In, uh, in yes, I think, you know, we have received so many important questions. So you could uh, answer at least a, a few of them. Here. Okay. okay. Yes, so um, I, I will, I will take, uh, you know, I will have one question here that I felt uh, we could, we could really answer. And, and that question is uh, a lot of students, they ask, how much sh should I study? How much of studies is, uh, is sufficient? So, uh, you know, a lot of times uh, the answer varies from normally it starts in the region of 10 hours going up to 18 hours a day. And, and uh, in order to, you know, get into the top colleges like IITs, AIMS, you have to really burn the midnight oil. You have to study all the time. And that is a normal perception that has been formed. 
um, I would I would rather suggest that if in a long term strategy that when you have at least a year or two years to prepare, um, it is not the quantity of time that matters. So how many hours you are studying is not important. What is more important are two things: the quality of the time. So so in in all the six questions that we just now discussed, we were focusing on trying to get the maximum out of our time. in terms of knowledge in terms of information and how we can build upon them the the other thing is uh it is it is not like you studied for 3 days and then you did not study for 2 so what happens is your entire momentum is lost so what what we want to in order for success we want consistency that you study for a certain amount of time every day now that certain amount of time can be 4 hours 5 hours or you can start with any number and then gradually build on the momentum when you build momentum when you start enjoying studies then you will soon realize that you will stop focusing on the on the quantity of time you will rajiv start- one more one more thing i think we should uh, uh, advise the student yes, that if they study something a, a, a chapter let us say and then at the end of that study they should try to answer questions about that chapter they should take a small test now they should take a small test the same day they should take a small test 3 days later they should take a small test 7 days later and they should take a small test 1 month later so i think that way for that same thing that you have studied you will get a feedback about your uh, the quality of things that you have studied the amount of retention that they have taken place and the feedback will come in terms of how much so studying and taking a test on what you have studied during this practice uh, at least as you go ahead is an important thing because only studying without solving problems uh, yeah. will not really be fruitful absolutely absolutely uh, so sir uh, what what you are saying is that we should get into a loop of uh, learning theory seeing our you know learning outcome through some practice tests and then bridge the gap by you know identifying the areas which are weak and then again go back this, this is, is one part the other part i'm saying is about retention many people study something and then 3 days later forget everything so i think if that is your case then you should plan your study in a slightly different way so these two tests one is whether you have assimilated and found out where you have not so that you can study that part more the yeah. second is how much you are retaining and for how long yes absolutely absolutely so so i think uh, from this section now uh, where we have focused on some of these best practices of learning and studying we, we will we will now move on to the next session which is the tips to improve score in exams okay so so this is one part where again a lot of students asked how do we manage time how do we improve accuracy so let me just give you a quick uh, introduction to how do you improve your performance you know in any sort of competitive exam like je and neat you have to do two things the first thing is you should be able to solve questions accurately that means uh, out of the four options or the multiple formats of questions that are given you should be able to identify which is the correct answer and the second thing is you need to figure this out in a very short span of time because time is limited so you need both speed and accuracy so in this session now we will focus on how to improve your performance so if you see this this uh, bar here on the right hand side then a lot of times this is our our situation that we have a certain level of performance but our potential is this entire thing so let's say your potential is to score 75% but you are scoring let's say 60% so how do you bridge the gap of the 75 to 60% so you lose marks or you lose this percentage points because of two reasons one is because you make mistakes and mistakes are of various types so so you have got mistakes like uh, conceptual mistakes you make you make mistakes where which are fact based where you don't remember things there are ego based mistakes and then the most common mistake is is the silly mistake part so we will focus on how to improve all of them 
and then we will also talk about some of these tips and techniques of how to save time and how to solve problems very smartly okay by looking at the options and figuring some of them out all right so so let's let's come to this point let's look at some of the common errors that we make okay now i am sure you you all have heard of this uh, scientist called feynman dr richard feynman and and he he talked about this method in terms of you know how do you improve your understanding of a given given topic or given subject and even einstein for that matter was a big big fan of this whole he you know he used to say that if you can't explain something simply you don't understand it well enough now what what i'm trying to say here is is that whenever you choose a concept and and you know how many how many important concepts are there in each of the subjects or chapters so i'll just break it down for you very quickly uh if you look at jee or neat the three subjects physics chemistry maths or physics chemistry biology they have on an average combined the total number of chapters is around 100 and in each chapter you have four to five to six at most important concepts that you really need to master and if you have mastered that that means you have understood the chapter and and like that so there are a total of let's say 500 to 600 important concepts that you need to master for for these examinations now what what dr richard feynman suggests is that if you take a concept then you try to understand it first yourself and and try to then explain it to somebody it could be a child it could be your younger brother or sister it could be your you know any person if you can explain to them the whole concept in a very very simple way not not using jargon not using very technical words but you know just in a very very simplified way when you are explaining this to a to your you know brother or sister then what you will identify is that there are some things that you are not able to explain so well and you would know that then you go back look at your whole map of this of let's say i'm giving you an example here of how do you break down a simple thing by you know asking a lot of questions by making some chart diagrams like this so you know when you make these notes try to identify the areas where you are not able to understand things to the depth of it and the best way to understand this is by going and explaining it to somebody else if you don't find somebody you can talk to yourself and try to explain it to yourself like you know like in a soliloquy so so like that okay so what this will do is this will help you to make notes like we have already talked about making notes so make notes by which you break down each topic ask the why's ask the why nots and ask ask the hows you know how does something really work and here obviously because in je and neat je and neat are application based exams that means it's not just sufficient to know what is something it's not just sufficient to know what is newton's law it is also important to know what are the applications of newton's laws so so whenever you are doing this around a concept try to identify some of these common typical type of questions which are asked in terms of applications it is also important that if you try to connect some of these theories and concepts to practical applications in life so you can you can work on that the the second type of mistake that students make is they can't remember so one of the questions that a lot of you ask is and what sir was also mentioning how do you retain better uh, because you have studied something and in in exams a lot of questions are fact based you know what is the color of the salt or you know how many how many times this has happened how many so there are a lot of very very simple fact based questions so what i would suggest is is that you try to i am sure a lot of you already employ this is something called mnemonics now mnemonics basically means it's a it's a method or a pattern of using alphabets or figures or facts by in a such a way that you you are able to remember them easily so for example one of the common uh, mnemonics that i use it's called cot mutter uh, for those uh, you know there is a chapter in both je and neat called solid state and there you have seven types of bravais lattices so the seven types of bravais lattices uh, can be can be remembered as you know cubic orthorhombic triclinic monoclinic tetrahedral tetragonal hexa hexagonal and rhombohedral 
so so like this similarly a lot of you remember the elements of the periodic table as signs you know by taking the first uh, symbol of those elements similarly how do you remember the element uh, the planets in the solar system so you know you've got mercury venus earth mars jupiter saturn so my very educated mother just served us noodles and in this way there are many methods by which you can, which can help you to remember things uh, by associating it with some mnemonics and other thing that you can do is you can also create some colorful charts by which you can remember the color of the precipitates because it is very difficult to remember them sometimes so if you make notes when you use when you become a little creative make some use some color then it it kind of registers in our brain in a better way so so this is uh, these are some of the techniques to help you remember better the the last thing that i would like to say is that uh, in this part in terms of remembering things is you know you make notes and and always revise from your notes and then keep improving your notes it i have seen this one of the most common factors for all students who do well in exams is that they have very very good notes notes meaning you make your own notes okay so so that's that's something which you should do um whenever i look at this part i i always think of uh, this this part you know my 2004 iit je exam where i spent uh, 25 minutes on one chemistry question and uh, so chemistry was my strongest subject and i i and i thought in the exam how can i not be able to solve an organic chemistry question because organic chemistry in chemistry was my strongest and what what ended up happening was a big blunder because uh, i did not score uh, in chemistry up to my expectation so i would i would first is you know try to understand how much time should you actually spend on a given question so this is a very simple calculation here it is basically the total number of questions in that exam divided by the total time so like for example in je main with the current format you are roughly you should spend 2.5 minutes per question and in neat you have 1 minute per question okay the the thing about ego is what we forget is is that by solving any particular question or a question that we get stuck up in and we start spending let's say 3 minutes 4 minutes 5 minutes on that question is that you will not get any extra marks for that question and nobody will ask you later on that whether you were able to solve question number 36 of that of that paper or not what will finally matter is your total score and your rank corresponding to that so learn to skip questions do not spend more time than the stipulated amount of time per question because you always have the option of coming back to that question again there is nothing worse than com coming out of an exam hall then looking at the question paper or later on seeing the question paper and seeing that you were not able to even see 10 questions which and out of which you could have easily solved seven there is nothing more regretful than that so always you know uh spend equal amount of time and you can always come back to these questions later please remember this because this is one of the major blunders that people can do in an exam is over spending time on a particular question okay now we move on to the most uh, interesting mistake that we all make which is silly mistakes and and for example in my in my year i wrote tan 30 as root 3 i i remember this uh, as a mistake i i will i think i'll remember this for the rest of my life and of course we all remember these very nice silly mistakes that we make um so the first thing about silly mistakes is that you have to understand that everybody makes silly mistakes okay and so the first step to improving something is that you you need to first recognize that okay so we we should be aware and we will talk about the, some of the types of silly mistakes that we make which are calculation mistakes not reading the question carefully uh, rushing through this and and most often a lot of students also come and tell us is that i get very nervous and because i get nervous i rush through the paper i you know uh, i i wanted to mark something i mark something else so a very common thing that students do is they mark the wrong bubbles in the exam hall and many times we have seen students complaining of this and all this happens because you get nervous you get over excited now regarding getting nervous 
what i want to share is is that getting nervous also at the beginning of the exam is a very normal thing you will get nervous about something you care about like like sir said that you know you have butterflies in your stomach so it is very important to be able to translate that nervous energy into constructive positive energy as you enter into the exam so you you can do some of these things number one breathe you know breathe slowly breathe deep and breathe slowly whenever you feel you are getting excited you are getting rushed up you know focus on your breathing breathe slowly second is don't look around what others are doing just focus on your paper and your thoughts close your eyes and the starting of the paper whenever you are taking any exam it is very important that when you are starting a paper you start with a strategy everyone should have a strategy for a given paper so in each of these papers je and neat you have three subjects you should always start your paper with your strongest subject so if you are strongest in physics you start the paper with physics if you are strongest in chemistry you start the paper with chemistry and always remember stick to your strategy do not go to the exam hall and suddenly become adventurous and decide to experiment when you are looking at the question paper try to start with the easy questions again in that chapter there are some in that subject which is your strongest subject there are some chapters which are your stronger chapters in that also try to start with questions from there it is very important to get a good start and then once you have a good start you can use that momentum throughout the exam all right so now let us look at some of the questions where or the some of the common types of mistakes that you know students have made or we have found students making uh, in in these in these exams right so we have picked up these questions from je and neat so i this is the first example um most of the times students do not read the not so we are we are we kind of tune out the not so in this question which of the following statement is not true for glucose a lot of students in a rush they just mark the first statement or the second statement that they see is true for glucose okay and i i want to mention this before we go to the next questions is uh if you get a question wrong you get a you get a negative mark so instead of getting a positive plus 3 or plus 4 you get a minus 1 so that's a huge difference because each mark counts okay so this is an example similarly this question students very often they don't just miss out the term real roots they also miss out the number of real roots okay so so here again i would like you all to you know again we are just giving you some some of the common mistakes or the methods by which students you know don't read the question they rush through this so remember to read this these kind of questions properly this is a typical example in this question out of these three compounds you have been asked to find out the increasing order of pkb we are mostly used to finding the basicity order of basicity so what happens is a students answer in order of increasing basicity but the question that that is being asked is for pkb so pkb is just you know minus log of that so what happens is that the term of the orders it it changes in terms of pkb values so this is a very common mistake that students make in you know particularly in chemistry or in biology where pka or pkb has been asked to find out and you simply mark for ka kb or one of is constants so so this is the the other type of mistake that that students make uh, uh again a typical mistake is uh you know here you've been asked to find out the standard potential for a given reaction uh if you look at the options the options have got a plus minus sign so a lot of times students find out the answer but then they don't look look out for the sign difference between the questions so between the different options so here is something that i would i would like you to focus on and be careful look at the options and look at their signs and then mark the answer don't be in a rush look at the look at the options carefully and the last question in this series again uh, just like we don't read the word not similarly in this question also we are we are always very 
focused on finding the true true statement so students don't read the word false statement or they kind of ignore the word false statement they they just read it as the statement amongst the following and then they just mark the first correct true statement so so these are these are some of the common mistakes or errors that students like you can avoid uh, so you know how do you avoid this you you basically become aware that you know these are the types of mistakes all right now now there is some because i have been talking for quite some time now so i would like to give you people some exercise okay uh, in the in this section where i will where i will talk about how you can use some tips and techniques to solve questions i will give you all some time to give your answers on the on the on the comment section okay so each question i will give you let's say 20 to 30 seconds to read the question and quickly give an answer and then we will try to see uh, how to solve that question all right so in this this section is what we call as enhancers how can you enhance your performance through saving time and through techniques okay all right so this is the first question this is the iit j 2009 question if you know the answer to it then uh, you can put your comments on the facebook chat part you must have a pen and a paper i hope to solve this oh by the way we have given the answer here okay uh in any case i'll just i'll just you know uh, if you were to solve this question in the normal method the normal method being that you will just solve it like this where you will for, you know you will find tan and then you will this is this is the normal method and this whole method will take you approximately 2 to 3 minutes to solve now if you just intelligently do this just put the value of n as 1 then you find out what is the first term similarly you can find out so what happens is in this case if you put the value of n as 1 then this the first term should be what this the sum of the first n terms where n is 1 so now all you have to do is put the value of n as 1 here and find out which option gives you the value as c square that's it so how much time would would this have taken this would have taken like hardly 30 seconds or maybe 45 seconds you end up saving nearly 2 minutes to solve this question all right okay let's let's move on to the next question how do you solve and get the value of this determinant have a look at the question this is again a je main question all right again let me show you the the conventional method if you were to so all this by the conventional method then you would have to do so many operations and then from there you will find this answer as as option b all right i am absolutely sure that some of you or many of you rather have by now figured out that you could be because x y z are real numbers so you can you can use the technique of putting in some values of x y and z so if you if you put x y and z, that is 1 2 and 3 the determinant reduces to this and you get this so 2 then all you have to do is put x y z as 1 2 3 in the options and then from there you will find that option b will give you this as as 2 now you have to be kind of you know you could be solving this even faster because x equal to 1 2 3 you know you have to do so much calculation uh when i was discussing this with professor path pratim das he gave an even more elegant solution he said because there are many x's 
here in the in the in this uh, determinant why don't we take x as 0 the moment you take x as 0 this determinant reduces to something even more easy to solve you know these two terms become zero all you have to do is calculate for this and you therefore are you, are you i hope you are understanding what we are trying to talk about here you have to you have to be very discriminative about the kind of choices you make and and you know these tips and techniques you will become better it's like you can't remember you know you can't memorize these tips and techniques you can understand but the more you practice you will develop an eye as to which choice can i take which number can i take what value can i substitute and that really helps okay all right so let's move on to the third example now you know in this question i i mean just have a look at this question so an electron of mass m and magnitude of charge e initially at rest gets accelerated by a constant electric field the rate of change of de broglie wavelength at time t ignoring relativistic effect okay if you look at this question it, it is it is a you know question where uh, you have to apply different types of formulas and if you go with the normal method of solving it you will have to use de broglie's equation lambda equal to h by mv and then from there you will find this whole thing okay uh, if you look at the four options you find that there is something common to all the four of them which is planck's constant electron and the field electric field h by e e you see all the four options h by e this is a common factor and what varies is time in all four of them in some the time is in the denominator in this it's square root of time and if you look at the question that is being asked to solve then they are asking you to calculate the rate of change of de broglie wavelength meaning l by t that means in the options the dimension of the answer should be l by t means velocity l by t in that respect length by time so all you have to do is is find out the dimension of this common factor in all the options h by e e h you can find out from lambda equal to you know e equal to hc by lambda and and you can find this value which is lt the dimension of h by e e is length in, into time now which option in those four will give you l by t the one where time in that option is in the denominator and square of that that means this option that means this option is the correct answer so we in fact this is an example i'm using for you know dimensional analysis we use this many in many questions a lot of questions you know if you just keep an eye for it you don't have to solve the question you can just use the you know understand what is the dimension that is being asked look at the options if you can't find out one option you can at least narrow it down to two options you can eliminate some of the options okay so so that's that's the that's this trick to this question this is a this is a pretty simple question uh, again it uh, in terms of you know how do you apply these tricks i've given you the answer to it again if you were to solve this it will it will take you some time to solve this right now um, again you can use a very simple trick here because the value of this expression is independent of any range of theta so you can take a value of theta which will be easy which will you know once you substitute it it will make the expressions very easy to solve so here let's take the value of theta as 45 degrees and uh, and then you can easily calculate it and get it as as the as the answer here which is which is true so so this is another example of intelligent substitution and then getting the answer from it all right this one i want you to solve very quickly i will give you 30 seconds this is a neat question the number of sigma and pi bonds in pent to in four ion okay so i am sure a lot i mean you would have most of you would have gotten this uh, figured this out so the normal method by which students would do is they would calculate both the number of sigma bonds and pi bonds 
by drawing this figure correct and then you will then you will from there find it out but if you look at the options carefully i'm sure a lot of you would have figured out that it's two in and four in there is one sigma bond in one pi bond in this in a double bond and there are two pi bonds in a triple bond so the total number of pi bonds is three so in a, in all the four options only the first option has three pi bonds so you need not calculate the number of sigma bonds all you need to do is calculate the number of pi bonds and and it will again help you save time and get to the answer so again look at the options very carefully figure out what has been asked look at the options and then then jump into solving a question don't read a question and and just jump into solving it just give it a few seconds to understand if you could do it some other shorter method if you could apply more something like that the second last question in terms of tricks uh the total energy of an electron in an in an orbit is given as minus 3.4 electron volts you have been asked to find out its kinetic and potential energy so i'm sure again again here again think about it for one second you know that total energy is equal to kinetic kinetic energy plus potential energy right so if you look at the four options you can simply see that only this option if you add these two will give you minus 3.4 the rest of the three options will not give you minus 3.4 so you can you can simply mark this without even doing any calculations else you can you can always solve this question uh, you know by doing the the fact that the other method is also that kinetic energy and potential energy have opposite signs kinetic by potential is is negative so so the only option where they are they are having opposite signs is this one in this they have the same sign same sign same sign so again you could go for this but so there is no need to solve anything in this question okay now coming to the last question of the tips and techniques this is my favorite question it came in 2004 in my year and uh, i will give you all so this is for students who are in class 12 appearing for je neat right now and uh, those who are in class 12 who will be appearing for je neat in next year so you've been given that sodium crystallizes in body centered cubic lattice the edge length is given and uh, you have to find out the density in si units okay if you look at this question then this question is you you can understand it in the in the conventional method everyone knows the formula density is mass by volume and then then you will use in mass you will put n is equal to 2 because it is body centered you will put the mass here which is the atomic number by avogadro number and you will put a as the the unit cell length which is 430 picometer you will convert all of this into kg and meter and you can imagine the amount of calculation i have not put it here but it's a, it's a lot of calculation and if you look at the options then it is still a, a lot of calculation right I mean i mean you will have to still figure out which of these so let me give you all a hint as to how to how to think about this question you have been asked to find out the density of sodium in si unit i am giving you a hint the hint is that density of water in si unit is 1000 1000 kg per meter cube now can you figure out which is the which is out of the four options which option do you think could be the right answer and uh, over the years uh, i have always found that students are able to pick up either without the hint or with the hint um, if you apply a basic knowledge that sodium floats on water if sodium floats on water then the density of sodium has to be less than 1000 out of the four options only 962 is the one which is less than 1000 so you don't have to do all this calculation all you have to do is just know this apply this very simple knowledge of yours and because everything is connected right so and you can very easily answer this question okay so so that's the these are some of the techniques so so we understood that these techniques that we have uh it requires a lot of presence of mind it requires a lot of practice and 
it it will help you to uh, save time and at this and you can use this time for other problems with where you have to solve so not every question you will be able to apply a trick some questions will help you save a lot of time okay so uh, we 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 had talked about something called uh, you know how do you so we are talking about practice and we are now talking about how do you perfect your practice so you know a lot of students they say i i study a lot and as sir was saying right that after whatever you study you should see whether you have understood the concept or not so you do a lot of practice then you do a lot of reflection when we say reflection what we mean is that you constantly see where are you going wrong whether you are making silly mistakes if you are making silly mistakes then what kind of silly mistake if you are making conceptual mistake then which are those concepts you are making the mistake and once you reflect then you can improve on it and you know you have over a period of time once you have made enough mistakes you will you will be this expert in that chapter in the words of niels bohr an expert is a man who has made all the mistakes which can be made in a narrow so we want you to make all the mistakes in your practice exams uh, before your actual exam so you can minimize the gap between your potential and performance okay so these are this is the section sir uh, the q and a yeah i think you know um, rajiv one important thing here is when people are practicing Yes. There are two kinds of practice. One is practicing when you are studying the subject. Mm -hmm. One is practicing when you are giving the exam. So there is, there is a difference between the time spent, the thought given when you are studying the subject and practicing to know whether you have understood that topic. Yes. yes. And how much time you would give to that. And the other is practicing when. you are giving an as if an exam true so so there is a difference between these two and there is a difference between the reflection or self evaluation of both of these i think you should elaborate a bit of this now or in a later uh, part whenever it is because people will not understand or grasp a subject when they are really starting to understand the subject and not giving the yes. exam not practicing for a time bounded test mm. for that time the practice and the evaluation and the reflection is different from when they are giving absolutely, an exam absolutely so i i, just, i think that that you should uh, explain yes. uh, so so what what sir you are saying is you absolutely uh, you know on point there so when when we are studying and when we are learning a new chapter or a new concept um, you know uh, the practice or when we are solving questions we sh i believe that we should struggle a lot with those questions we should give it as much as time as possible and uh, till the time we have been able to figure out something that means we should not rush to find out the solution of a given question and and we should also try to find out uh, why a method did not work because when we are practicing it's not that a question can be solved in only one method there can be multiple methods of solving the question and there are multiple methods to not solve a question so so that is the part i think there is a lot of deep reflection and introspection that students should do when you are studying a given chapter and and please struggle with the questions so what i what i mean by struggle with the questions is that there are a lot of questions which teach us a lot that if you are struggling with the question for one day two day don't say that you know i want to get see the solution because solution solution fine you can see the solution but uh, when you struggle with a question over a period of time you will find five methods or wrong methods of solving the question for that particular question but they can be used for solving something else uh, when it comes to exams i but use this one is to two formula if a if a exam is of let's say of 3 hours you must spend anywhere between 5 to 6 hours to analyze the the solutions and why you made a mistake or how you solved the question because uh, it's not just the end in taking a test you have to really really deeply understand uh, where you went wrong not only in terms of solving the question but also in terms of your strategy uh, did you really get questions right towards the end did you get nervous at a certain point this reflection has to happen right after that because what we are trying to say here is 
is that you need to first acknowledge you need to recognize and then deeply reflect after you have done these three things then you can leave the third part is that once you have given your best you have improved you can leave it to god for the for the final part that is your performance in the in the final exam but uh, before that it is a circle it is a loop uh, so there is one more thing that i would like to mention here is that a lot of times uh, students compare their performance with that of their friends performance so so uh, and and therefore this happens very often is that uh, students say that you know my friend studied so much or this, i studied equal to my friend but my performance is not up to the mark and uh, what what we would rather you know suggest to the students here is is that you know your competition is not with your friends your competition is with yourself so this process that we are talking about of practicing reflecting practicing reflecting it should be a process by which you are improving from where you are today to where you are the next day if you improve yourself continuously you are competing and becoming better with yourself and so therefore do not worry about what others are doing just focus on your preparation sir shall we move on to the next section from here or any i think any you other? should move on okay 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 all right so now we come to the to the final section of our of our talk today and here we will we will focus on again uh, so we have got questions where students have asked how do i plan for two years and we have got questions where students have asked how do i plan for the next two weeks because we have a exam coming up so we therefore decided to you know break up the whole of the strategy and planning process uh, into two things one is a short term the other is a long term and and we believe that you know a strategy is very very important because you have to design success your success will not happen on its own you have to prepare and plan for it so there are two objectives of doing strategy or developing a strategy the first objective is that you should be able to learn every topic well that is that is the first goal the second goal is that you should be able to translate that learning and do well in an exam because if you know the topics well and you are not able to perform well in the exam it doesn't help right so for those students who are currently in class 12 and will be appearing for their je neat in september we have for you we will only focus on the b point which is doing well in this exam right now because you have very limited time and for those who are currently in 11 and who have just come to class 12 for you we will create a strategy which will help you to focus on both a and b all right so again we we looked at your questions and we found that a lot of your questions focused on stress that you know you get, you you are getting stressed because you don't know how to complete your syllabus you are getting stressed because you have a huge backlog uh, especially in class 12 students say that they have a huge backlog of class 11 uh, you don't know how to revise all the topics well you keep forgetting all that you are studying and therefore how do you how do you ensure that a topic that you studied 6 months back how do you ensure that it is at a certain level and and you know the syllabus like the universe always seems that it is expanding so so how do you how do you figure out a method and to to you know finish the whole syllabus in a good way and then keep revising keep taking tests so that you reach your peak performance during the time of your exam so that is that is the these are some of the questions that you talked about so what we said is that you know planning it helps you to break down this entire journey into practical milestones so that, that is something that you have to create and a calendar really helps so you kind of have to build a calendar that you know this time or this month or these three months i'm going to do this the next three months i'm going to do this so we'll we'll talk about this what happens is is that after you have built a, a milestone based calendar you keep a track of it on a weekly and a monthly basis and when you are keeping track of your progress you you know what happens is then if you are making progress whether it's slow but it is gradual you keep building momentum which over a period of time it it leads to success so so what we are trying to say is keep winning the battles to win the war so let's let's get into the short term strategy first 
so when we talk about the short term strategy just just try to look at this this graph here we are we want you to focus on something called roi which is return on investment so when we talk about return on investment we are essentially talking about a chapter's return on investment that means what is the probability that questions will come from that chapter in the exam so there are two two ways by which you can uh, classify that chapter whether there, there is a high probability or whether there is a low probability the second parameter is on the y axis where we say how much effort will it be required from your end to complete or to cover this chapter so either the chapter is a high effort chapter or a low effort chapter so what we have done here is we have created four buckets this bucket is the bucket where the chapters have very high probability of coming in the exam but they require very low effort so this is my maximum roi very high roi bucket this bucket consists of chapters again which have very high probability but they also require require high effort and similarly for the other two buckets so we are calling these four buckets as a b c and d the methodology to calculate the probability and effort is i'll just quickly tell you how we have done this we have analyzed the last 10 years of question papers of je and neat for all the three subjects each and we have found out the questions that have come from each of the chapters the number of questions and from here we have been able to find out which chapters have more proportion of questions coming in the exam and which chapters have low proportion of questions in the exam similarly the effort part what we have done is we have basically looked at the ncert books if you look at the ncert books right at the beginning they talk about they give a list of chapters and the number of periods that are required to cover each of these chapters so as a thumb rule we have taken that as our parameter to decide whether there is a chapter is a high effort chapter or a low effort chapter simply on the basis of the number of periods that ncert has mentioned but the effort that you will need to give to a given chapter will be a function of your level of preparation in that chapter currently so you can decide whether uh, if if there is a chapter which according to us is a very high effort chapter but you have prepared it very well thoroughly then for you it becomes a low effort chapter but this is the normal thumb rule that we have used so now let's look at this as your strategy uh, i think almost 60% of the students asked uh, which chapters to study how do i decide uh, you know what what sequence of chapters like that so what we are suggesting here is is that if you look at those four buckets we have again drawn those four buckets here buckets a b c and d so you should first focus on these chapters especially if your exam is very near you should focus on these chapters which are called top priority chapters then you move on to this bucket which is which is the next high, high roi chapters then this and then this so this is the strategy that we are going to use to identify the priority of chapters which chapters to study first which chapter to study after that and which chapter to study after that okay so let me give you an example have a look at this uh, this slide here this is j main physics all the chapters that are there in in j main's uh, j main physics syllabus they are mentioned here what we have done is we have basically classified them into four buckets okay so so if you start studying then you can try focusing on these chapters first in bucket a because these chapters have had a very large proportion of questions in j main over the last 10 years and they require less time and effort for you, from your end to prepare and then you go to bucket b c and d what we have done is that i'm going to show you only one slide here for j main physics we have collated this for j main chemistry maths neat physics biology and uh, chemistry and we have put all these slides at the end of our presentation which you will be able to download uh, from ndli website after registration so so that will be available to you uh, this whole all these slides will be available to you all right this this was short term strategy in terms of figuring out you know which chapter i should study and which chapter i should you know keep for later like that now we come 
to the to the you know kind of the part which is the long term strategy how do you prepare over a period of a year or two years and and here we have a very very simple philosophy uh you so the mistake that we make is we often try to finish one chapter and and try to attain expert level in that chapter in the, in one go that means suppose you studied atomic structure right at the beginning of 11 uh, and you say that in 3 months i will i will master atomic structure so what the problem with this strategy is that first thing is it is very difficult to understand all the nuances and concepts of a chapter in one go because you are reading it for the first time the second problem is that after 6 months from from the beginning of class 11 you would have forgotten a lot of things about atomic structure so if you if your level was here at the beginning of 3 months after 6 months you would have come here because you have already forgotten so much so so the strategy that we are trying to propose is a phase wise stage wise strategy so what we are trying to say is is that when you start a given chapter your level of understanding and preparation is let's say less than 25% that means you you understand less than 25% of the chapter if there is a question from the chapter there is less than 25% chance that you will be able to solve the question. In the first phase, you convert all these chapters or whichever chapters you have selected. Suppose you have five chapters in chemistry in your, in your midterm exam. So, and you have three months to go for it. So in the first month, take all the five chapters and try to get them to go from 25% to 50% proficiency. Then, build upon that up to 50%, convert that 50% into 75% proficiency. Again, after that, one more cycle. And then give one more cycle to get your chapters from 75% up to 100% proficiency. This, this can be used at any stage of your preparation, whether you are in class 12 or whether you are in class 11. And this can be repeated. This can be repeated. What will happen is, is that after you are taking these, so you can also, you know, in this time you are taking level one chapter test, here you are taking level two chapter test, and here in the final one you are taking the higher order questions from this. So what will happen is every time you are revising and building up on your base, you will constantly improve. And towards the end, which is the last phase, is that you must revise the whole syllabus multiple times and take full length mock tests. Take as many number of practice mock tests Look at the previous year question papers. They are all available on NDLI. And you can understand with the solutions that, you know, this solution works. There is an alternate solution. How do you think? Uh, you know, and this is what will help you to prepare. So you have to prepare a calendar, figure out a strategy of a phase by strategy, and then move on. Yes, sir. I think... Hey, uh, Rajiv, Rajiv, you know what? Uh, this, this what you mentioned is very good. This strategy very good what students will have a problem is creating a timetable mm. by which they can complete everything by the way you have said they have got one year or let us say they have got two years yes. and if you try to fit it in a monthly weekly daily schedule mm. you will see that 24 hours is not sufficient that is what people generally feel so i think you know uh, they should go through a mechanism mm by which firstly whatever they have understood they must understand well that is very important covering 100 percent of the syllabus and understanding two percent is worse than covering 60 percent of the syllabus and understanding uh, almost uh, the whole of it so i think you know there will be questions and you also alluded to forming a timetable and reflecting I think we must, uh, you must share with them your thoughts about, there are people who will finish the whole syllabus five times, but there will, there will be others who will not. Yeah. I think we, we are trying to make sure the good people will always do well, but there are people who have the potential, hmm. who can answer whatever they answer perfectly, but they take more time to study. Yes. I think you must advise you know, it is not a one size fits all for everybody. So I think you must give some tips here. Uh, I think uh, so. One of the first questions uh, or things that I would like to focus on here is uh, a lot of students they ask how many subjects should I study in a day and how many subjects should I study in a week. 
and uh, my my advice is your students should take up at most two subjects in a day and uh, so suppose you are studying for five hours this is not included uh, this is not inclusive of your school time or other engagements that you have i am talking about five hours of self study so when you are doing five hours of self study then you can at most take two subjects and give each of them two and a half hour each now suppose you are in a uh, in a so of course different students have different levels of uh, preparation so uh, some students will have a lot of their chapters in in this bucket where they have you know 80% of the chapters where they have less than 25% understanding and, uh, and some students will be in this bucket what i'm trying to say is um, is that you must focus on each you know do a self analysis i think that is one of the most important things students should do a self analysis look at all the chapters let's say you talk about uh, physics or chemistry you look at all the chapters that are given there and you put a color coding next to them this is what we we get students to do and this strategy really works because you are first thing you are trying to identify where you stand so you know let's say 30% fall in red 40% fall in orange and let's say the rest 30% fall in yellow and and when i say red meaning you have not even started that chapter it falls into that bucket then you have to decide because you have a lot of commitments in terms of you have your school exams because they they there are certain chapters that that will be coming in that exam so that time phase period between where you are and your school exams is where you have to decide that these chapters that are going to come in that school exam i must get them up to let's say a certain level so suppose you are already in in yellow in in let's say five chapters in the school exam in two chapters you are in yellow try to get them to to green in the other three chapters you are in red try to get them to orange first and if time permits then get them to yellow so what what we are trying to say is that uh in the exam what what sir is mentioning and i will i will mention this in to crack uh, je or neat you don't have to solve 100% of the paper that is that is something which is a which is a given if you look at the last 10 years of analysis of people who have gotten good ranks who have gotten into the top colleges let's say iits nits we have found that that percentage lies between 45 to 60% let's say you want to score 50% in a given exam for a given standard of the paper you need to score 50 to 60% that means if you don't know all the chapters in the in in all the subjects at the green level it is all right you need to have a certain percentage of the chapters that you know very very well that means if there is a question that comes from that chapter you will be able to solve you need to have some chapters in the yellow level and very few chapters in the orange level let's say you know so this ratio could be 6 is to 3 is to 1 or 7 is to 2 is to 1 like that it it's it's like that ideally don't have any chapters in the red zone ideally because if you get a get a sitter baby sitter question uh, in the exam from the red zone and you are not able to solve it because you didn't know anything about that chapter then that's a big regret so this is a gradual process and you have to create your timeline based on your comfort level based on your current preparation level and keep improving get 60 to 70% of the chapters focus on getting them into the green zone and let's say 20 to 30% of the chapters in the yellow zone if you reach that then then you are pretty you know comfortable in terms of your exam performance so that's that's the thing sir that's yeah that's great what... let's move on okay so um i think uh, that i just wanted to ask, answer one last question here for the students which is uh, how do we manage school exams and competitive exams together because that's uh, one question that we very frequently get and all i have to say is that you know the school exam and the competitive exam which is je and neat here they are they are pretty much the syllabus is the same it's just that the level varies in terms of application so when i you know focus on the concepts basics at the school level and then solve problems for for je main and neat don't look at them separately that's my answer so uh, you you don't have to manage it is basically transitioning from one 
level to the other level. So, I think, sir, there are there was a there were a lot of questions which I would like you to when when you are talking about NDLI now, a lot of students said that uh, they are from rural areas, they don't have access to a lot of facilities, they don't have access to content, and how do they prepare for these exams? And uh, how how you know? I think NDLI is a real you know good platform for these students to explore. So yes, I think sure. I'm interested in this. Yeah. So, you know, uh, first of all, thank everybody for joining. Thank you, Rajiv. It was very, very nicely uh, presented. I think you have raised more interest and more questions. And I think I will request all the candidates and participants here to put up their questions. We will put this up on, on the social media so that people subsequently can ask questions. We'll have follow-up sessions. The National Digital Library of India, if you go to Google, and you type National Digital Library of India or National Digital Library, it will be one of the top hits. Then National Digital Library is one library for all of India, which covers from KG to PG to researchers for all subjects, not only necessarily for JE and NEET. In that section of the National Digital Library, I will request all of you to become registered members of the National Digital Library. If you go to the next slide, you will see that the National Digital Library is a 24 by 7 umbrella library. It has got a single search, it has got browse, it has got various domains and verticals from school, career, development, everything else. It has got a lot of material. All your NCRT books, video lectures, a lot of things are available for the school children. It can be accessed free. And it can be accessed free by all people of the country and it can be accessed even at any time during 24 hours. If, if you go to the next slide, you will see that there are two ways to access the National Digital Library of India. Firstly is the web app. So if you have got the web app, then you can access it through both the links of the web app mentioned there. And you also have a mobile app. And therefore, in the mobile app or the web app, especially in the mobile app, if you are in a place where you have got con uh, access, you can download all these material. And then you can check all these answers and material whenever you want. And in the web app, we have got, go to the next slide. For this particular case, National Digital Library has got something called an NDLI tutor. There we have all the solved multiple ways of solution for JE main, JE advanced and several others. We also have lectures, content of all these topics. If you go to the next slide, then you'll see that there is a JE advanced tutor where all the solutions are given, worked out solutions are given, and you can get all these solutions for free. Moreover, for all these subjects, you have got video lectures from various expert teachers and every other thing which is available here. You also have other sources. There is a source called STEM EZ, which has got hundreds and thousands of questions on physics, chemistry, mathematics, and things like that. And you can practice each and every of these. And for this, you can access it from anywhere you want, both on your mobile app, as well as for the email, uh, as well as from the web app. And finally, you can download all these materials onto the mobile. Those who are working in schools in rural areas, the schools can download this material in the schools and then share it with the people there. We will also come up, for those who are preparing for a year or long, we'll come up with more material where you can access it offline. So I will very strongly request and ask people to go through this uh, NDLI, go to the National Digital Library of India, become a registered user and start using this. And we will come up with more such webinars and please post your questions and answers. Let's, now let me come before we terminate. Once uh, Lord Rutherford received a call saying that another of his colleague told him that he had met a student. And this student when he asked the student and he explained the whole interaction with the student, he said that he asked the student 
do you know how to measure the height of a building using a barometer the student said yes sir so first answer the student gave was you tie a long piece of string to the neck of the barometer and lower the barometer from the roof to the skyscraper to the ground and measure that length of the string so this teacher was very annoyed he said that how do you get it he said the length of the string plus the length of the barometer will be the height of the building the teacher was very annoyed he was failed the student appealed and the student said the answer i gave is right how can you say i have failed because that is the method you did not tell me anything more so the student was then called for an interview and said okay you now answer this question and give me something related to physics so this is what the student first answered next he said take the barometer to the roof of the skyscraper drop it measure the time it takes to reach the ground and h is equal to half gt squared physics this time the examiner was getting angrier and angrier he said no do you have another solution he said yes sir and he said measure the height of the barometer and the length of its shadow measure the length of the skyscraper shadow and use proportional arithmetic this is physics and mathematics now this teacher is now boiling because he is not getting the standard textbook answer then he says tie a short piece of string to the barometer and swing it like a pendulum first at ground level and then at the roof and the division difference in the gravitational restoring force by this formula will give it to you so he is going higher and higher so the teacher is realizing that this fellow is not ordinary then he says do you have any other solution he says that if the skyscraper has an outside emergency staircase it would be easier to walk up and mark off the height of the skyscraper in barometer lengths and add them up so as soon as he gives a deep philosophical physics and mathematics answer he gives another outrageous answer to make this fellow angry so finally he says that use the barometer to measure the air pressure at the roof of the skyscraper on the ground and convert the difference in millibars into feet ratio and proportion then this flabbergasted teacher asked do you have any other solution he says knock on the janitor's door and say to him if you would like a new piece of barometer i'll give you this one if you tell me the height of the skyscraper the so finally the teacher asked this person realize that this is different ask this person do you know the answer he says yes i know the standard answer that is given in the textbook but i hate people when they want me to think the way they think and guess who this person was this person was niels bohr niels bohr who made fundamental contributions to quantum theory atomic structure and received the nobel prize so what i want to tell you is that while you prepare for je and gate while you do and keep your body and mind fit please make sure that learning science learning everything else is not about giving exams only exams have to be given for that preparation has to be made and we have given you the way to make preparations if you don't if you get into iits it does not mean life is made for you if you don't get into iits or medical does not mean life is lost for you i have millions of friends who have not made into iits and have made it very big i myself after giving the je exam did not go even go to see the result because i thought i had done so badly and therefore the knowledge of your subject the passion in your life will come in due course and the calling of your life will come in due course there are two aspects which we want to stress here the first aspect is that whatever you do do it sincerely and try to understand it to the best of your knowledge whenever you prepare for something prepare for it with your heart and soul don't do something that is of no relevance to you my daughter clearly said that i don't want to give all these exams i want to study anthropology which is fine there are many other things you can do in life and you don't have to be an engineer doctor or a scientist but if you wish to be one then please prepare please be sincere 
at this age all this what i am trying to tell you will be looking like gyans like old people and teachers who have grown old will give you but take my word we have learned it all the hard way that this is important so with this i really want to encourage all of you to prepare sincerely do whatever it is it's like you know you're playing a test match and somebody is uh, uh, bowling to you first ball will be an out swinger leave it don't let the first ball hurt how you are going to play the second ball don't let something hap- which has happened earlier affect you later on and then if you are in net practice then remember every shot go back take a video of your net practice and go back and see what you have done so this sort of practice reflection practice weakness identification is good for preparing for the exam do it sincerely this does not mean that you will succeed or fail in life life is a much much different dimension all of us if we succeed all of us have some unique talents so whatever is said here is about preparation which is very important this preparation even if you don't become an engineer doctor or if you become one you will notice later on that this practice reflection preparation is important not only for such exams but is important for the rest of your life in anything that you do with this i would like to thank rajiv i would like to thank all my colleagues here for all this and hand it over rajiv to tell them what are the next steps thank you sir for those uh, wise and encouraging words uh, so all the all the participants thank you for your time i hope the session was encouraging and useful for you uh, my colleagues uh, will be putting up a feedback form on the facebook live page uh, please fill up this feedback form and after you fill up this feedback form we will have your name and your email id we will use them to create e certificates and we will email them to you after uh, in order to access this presentation that we showed to you today uh, become a registered member if you have not already and then on the front page of ndli at the bottom you will find a link where you can then access this presentation so thank you again all the best and i uh, would like to end with the inspiring words of swami vivekananda arise awake and stop not till the goal is reached thank you thank you all thank you for joining thank you rajiv thank you so much thank you thank you everybody and thanks to all the participants with this we close this session and we look forward to meeting all of you please pour in all your questions and answers to everything that you have thank you very much